Hey guys, Hack Tutorials, and today I'm going to show you how to make an RTM tool in C++. So this is going to be the first video of a whole entire brand new series that I'm making. Um, and today I'm going to be basically just showing you how to set everything up and what program to download. Um, so why am I making this series? Well, in case you aren't familiar with RTM tools and how to make them, 99% of RTM tools, I'd say, are made with C Sharp rather than C++. Uh, reason being, um, I'm just going to tell you straight out, um, C Sharp is more efficient and easier to use for making RTM tools. I'm not making a general comparison of the two languages, they're different and good in their own ways, but for making RTM tools, um, C Sharp uh, probably does win. But um, I'm going to be showing you how to make one in C++ because I guess it's unique and um, there are no tutorials on YouTube and why be boring and do it in C Sharp when you could do it in C++, you know? Um, also, you might be in a situation like I was where I already knew C++ but not C Sharp and I was in no mood to go out and learn C++ because I knew already I could already use what I know. Because um, I was making an SPRX menu and from that I learned C++. So let's get right in. Um, if you're familiar with programming in C Sharp or C++, you probably uh, most commonly use Visual Studio as I have right here. This is 2010. I also have Visual Studio 2013. As you, yeah, if you're familiar with these logos, we're actually not going to be using Visual Studio for the for this series. Um, it's possible, but I'm not going to be doing it because uh, I found a much better easier to use program. Thank you. Thanks to Milky4444, um, which let me just talk about him for a second. Um, he is the reason all of this is possible, uh, coding RTM tools in C++. He came up with PS3 lib for C++, like the header file. Um, so huge thanks to him. He taught me all of this stuff. Um, go check out his next gen update. He has lots of very cool tutorials. And yeah, basically, from what I understand, um, he, he's the one who came up with all this stuff, so really, like, I want to give 99% of the credit to him, all right? But I'm just uh, showing how to do this in a video because no one's done this yet. All right, so first thing you're going to do is download the program that we're going to be using. It's called Qt Creator, so I already have it installed, but we're going to be installing it together again. So it looks like Qt Creator, but it's really pronounced Qt Creator. I don't know why, but it just is. So here's the link. Uh, once you go straight into the link, you know, click enter, it downloads automatically. Um, so this link will be in the description. Um, so we're going to be installing uh, Qt Creator version 5.2 because um, Milky says it's uh, the best version for this and I trust him. So we're going to be using this. Um, so yeah, also while it's downloading, I just want to say this video will look very complicated. Okay, um, it's not, it's going to look, it's going to look weird. Um, but it's nothing like this. This is this is going to be a unique a unique video in in this series. We're not going to be coding anything in this video. We're actually just going to be setting up the program, and this is going to be much more complicated than anything else we do. So just follow along, and that is all. Um, so I'll be back when this is done downloading. All right. So Q Creator is done downloading. It's right here, and it's saved to my desktop. So I'll go on my desktop. I just close out of this. Here it is. So just double click on this. This is the uh, offline installer. Uh, and I forgot to say, uh, you do need, I don't remember exactly how many gigabytes we're going to see, but probably like around 7 gigabytes of hard drive space for this, I'm not so sure, but we'll see. So click next. Um, this is fine. This is just uh, what the folder will be called. So this doesn't install like normal programs, like if you had Visual Studio or something, it would go um, C and then Program Files 86 or something. You'd see Microsoft Visual Studio. Well, it's not like that. It's not inside program files, it saves here. So here is my Qt creator that I already had installed, um, and here are all the files in it. So that's just where it's going to install. You could literally do it on your desktop if you want. I wouldn't do that, it's not very organized, but yeah. So this is just going to be in C. Uh, so click next. And here you want to have absolutely everything selected. So just uncheck this, or I mean, not uncheck, check it, and then make sure everything is checked. You want everything checked in here. Open these two. Everything should be checked in here. All right. If not everything is checked, then it's not going to work. All right. So then click next. 
Oh, and it says 3.04 gigabytes, so I was a bit wrong. It's like half of what I said. So that's, so that's how much you need on your hard drive. So click Next, uh, and then click Agree. And this is fine. Uh, click Next. Click Next. And wait, let's see what this says. Uh, whatever, just click Install. Uh, and wait for this to finish. I'll be back when it's done. Okay, so after a pretty long installation, uh, it finally has completed installing. Um, let's see, I don't want to open this. Let's just launch Qt Creator to make sure that it worked. Alright, so it opened. It's actually not going to look like this for you. It's going to have like the standard theme, like I changed mine to blue earlier. Um, and this has all my recent projects because for some reason this is linked with my other Qt Creator application. So if you go here, see, mine was originally named uh, Qt2. And uh, here it is and everything, but for some reason all the changes are still saved to this one. It's okay. So I'm going to show you what to do. All the files are still original, um, and it's going to look the same for you. So open up your um, Windows Explorer. Uh, go to where, basically just go to where you saved the Qt Creator application, the whole folder of it. So mine saved as Qt. So go into that, and then it should say uh, Qt, and then the version you installed. So we installed a 5.2.0. So go inside there. Uh, then click, uh, again, the version. So 5.2.0 is ours, so click on that. Then click SRC. Uh, then Qt Base, the third one. Um, then go down to MK Specs. Click on that. And then click W, and it'll scroll down to Win32-G++, click on this, and you'll find a file called QMake. Um, you should be able to double click it, and it'll open a notepad. Uh, if it doesn't, it says like choose um, application to open this with, then just choose notepad, or notepad++, whatever you want. Um, so now that you're inside here, uh, we're going to scroll down until you find something called QMake underscore owl flags. So it's right here, qmake underscore l flags, right here. There should be an equal sign and nothing after it. So uh, this is what it should look like for you. Click space and then type the following, minus static space, minus static again, and then minus lib gcc, just like that. All right, uh, and now that you have this, exactly like this, you should have only one space in here, right there. There's no space between these two, all right? So once you have this, just click Control S, or to be safe, just uh, save, and I can close out of this. And now we're gonna be doing the exact same thing, but in a different folder. Um, so go back until you see SRC. Now I'll click on the folder above it, mingw48 underscore 32. Um, one more time, go to MK Specs, then click W again, and click min uh, 132-g++. Go into QMake, scroll down like you did before, and we could have copied and pasted this, but whatever. So here we have uh, QMake underscore owl flags. So again, space, and do the same thing. Minus stat, uh, static, did I spell it right? Minus static, and again, minus static, minus lib gcc. All right, just like that, so file, save. And now we can close out of this. Um, so now just go back to your uh, cute folder. And we could actually close out of this we're going to go into command prompt. So in your Windows Start button, type CMD. All right, so once you're inside um, the command prompt, we're going to be typing in a directory to a certain file. So I'm just going to have to locate it while we do this. So it's going to be C. So here, how do I do this? There we go. So C colon backslash. And then we're going to have Qt backslash. This might be different for you, but so I'm going to go inside here, and then we have Qt 
backslash, then this folder, um, 5.2.0 dash rc1 backslash min gw48 underscore 32 backslash uh, we're going to go into bin, so bin uh, backslash, <clears throat> and now we're going to type in Q10, like that, Q-T-E-N, V2, dot, bat. Click enter. <clears throat> now it'll say setting up an environment for acute usage, uh, and then you'll see this right here. So in there, we're going to type in cd, um, I'm not so sure if there's supposed to be space, but let's just try it without dot dot uh, backslash src uh, backslash cute base All right, so then you'll see this right here. Um, and in here, we're going to type in configure minus static minus release space. No, there's a space between everything, by the way. Um, space minus open source space minus open gl space desktop. Let me see if I can make this wider. Can I? Okay, well OpenGL uh, doesn't have like an enter or anything, just this program is kind of short. So OpenGL is just one word, so dash OpenGL space desktop. So it should look like this, and once you've got this, click enter. Um, and then we're going to type in Y because it says, do you accept the terms of the license? Uh, y means yes, so we're going to click Y and then enter. And this, this will take a minute. All right, so that probably looked crazy, but um, whatever. So next, we're going to be doing something pretty similar. I mean, it's going to look pretty similar, but it's going to take a lot longer. So, um, so once it's done, you should see this. And then type in min gw dash make space sub dash src and click enter. Whoops, my bad, that didn't work because I typed in the wrong thing. It's actually, I forgot the 32. So min gw 32 dash make. Uh, space sub dash src now click enter and now this whole process should start again and as I said this will take a lot longer so might take 30 minutes might take more might take less for me the first time I did it took maybe like 10 15 minutes 20 minutes maybe so I'll be back when this is done all right, so that took quite a while. I don't know exactly how long it took. I wasn't really looking at the clock, but that, that was pretty long. I'd say around half an hour. Um, that was my estimate. Um, but yeah, so this may have taken you a couple hours, actually. It just depends on your computer's processor, I think. Uh, not, not so sure, but it should take quite a while, so just be patient. So once it's done, you can just close out of this. Um, and then open up Qt Creator. So the directory um, is, so go inside the Qt folder. Sorry if you heard some background noise there, I just closed my window so it should be better. Um, so go inside your Qt folder, uh, go inside the version, and then go into Tools, go into Qt Creator, Bin, and scroll down to the bottom and you should see Qt Creator. This is uh, the application, it should have the logo. Just double click on it uh, and you're in. So once you're inside here, let me just close this. Click on Tools, click on Options, all right, and I've already done this in my uh, other version of Qt Creator. I'm going to show you how to do this. So click 
on here, I'm just going to do that again. Tools, options, you know, start out in environment, but just go down to build and run. Click add. Okay, and then uh, go back to QCreator. Um, let's see. Click on 5.2.0-RC1, or the version basically. Click SRC, click Qt Base, click bin. You should find QMake right here. Click on QMake uh, and click open, just like that. Um, and once it's in there, just click apply. Uh, and once it's applied, click on kits, click add. Uh, and before we name it, we're going to go, see I already made one before, but whatever. So first you're going to click compiler and select MinGW 4.8 32-bit. Then debugger, we're going to do GNU, this one. And then for cute version, um, I think it's going to be, hold on, is this what we just made? Um, this one. There we go. This is this should be the one you just made. Um, so once that's done, you can rename it to, uh, I guess, static. And it automatically does this, whatever. So that's fine. It really, doesn't really matter what you name it. So uh, once you've done that, just click Apply. Click OK. All right, now you can go inside a project. Like here, I'll just start a new project again. Uh, new file, choose, uh, I don't know, tube, um, okay, next, 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 whatever, finish. So once you're inside your new project, just go ahead and click on debug and select the version you just made. Um, so we made static dash cute 5.2.0 SRC, that's what we made and then also select release. So once you have these two uh, selected, you are all done. You can just click out of this and now you could actually begin making your program. So that is all for today. Okay, all I showed you to do is how to set up the application. We did absolutely no coding uh, uh, in, in the direction of our program. All we did, again, just set up the program. That's all we did. So again, if this looked complicated, do not be intimidated, okay, because we're not doing anything else that looks like that. Um, everything else we do is going to be in C++ and it's going to be within here and stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to show you how to do any of that in this video. That will be in the next video. We'll really get things, get the ball rolling. So, um, by the way, this should be pretty obvious, but just making sure you know, um, you need a PS3 that is running a DEX firmware. You cannot be on CAX, okay? You cannot do this on CAX. You have to be on DEX, all right? Uh, if you don't if you don't even know what Dex is, you probably shouldn't be watching this. But yeah, you do have to be on Dex in order to do this. Okay, I'm, I, I'm just making that totally clear for everybody. Um, also, you need a, at least a custom firmware PS3. If you guys just don't even have a jailbroken PS3, then I don't know what you're doing here. To be honest, you probably don't even know what an RTM tool is. Um, but yeah, Dex firmware to make this right. So. Um, again, I want to give a bunch of uh, credit to Milky. Well, actually, just all the credit because this is all him. I'll actually link you to the NGU tutorial, or I mean, next gen update, I guess. Uh, the tutorial because he made one. Um, all I really did was take his tutorial and uh, show it visually in words and, and explain it in words uh, rather than just looking at what he wrote. I hope you guys thought this was helpful. Um, if you did, please leave a like, and I will see you in the next video.